Hey there, my fellow intellectuals. Today, we're going to be showing that the angular momentum of a particle does not change with respect to time if it is acted upon what is known a central force. So in this case, uh, the central force is one where the force only depends on the coordinate r. In essence, just the distance from the thing acting upon it. So one good example is gravity, right? So let's imagine you have like a planet here, and let's say you just have like a moon, a planet, and then the force that this planet acts on this little moon is along the line that connects their two center of masses. So this is what I'm talking about. It only depends on the distance between the two objects. It's not a function of like any angles such as theta or phi. It just depends on how far those two objects are away from each other. So we're going to show that if it's uh, if you know the the particles acted on by a central force, its angular momentum does not change with respect to time. So the way we're going to do this is that we're going to write out the definition of angular momentum. Remember that angular momentum is just defined to be the cross product of the position vector with the momentum vector. And uh, what we're going to do now is that we're going to take the time derivative of L, which is just taking the time derivative of its definition of the cross product. And so we have to do the product rule here, and we have to preserve the order. We need to have r first and p second because the cross product is not uh, interchangeable. You can't just swap like a cross b does not equal b cross a. So we need to be careful that we preserve the order of the two vectors when we do this product rule. So the first derivative we're going to take is with respect to r, with respect to r so it's dr dt. Now that's going to cross the momentum vector. And then this needs to add the cross product of r cross dp dt. Okay, hopefully that's simple enough. Now, one way we can simplify things is just letting dr dt, right? It's just the change of the position with respect to time. We know that as our good old velocity vector. And we also know that momentum is defined to be mass times velocity. And so this part right here can be rewritten as v cross m v. And now we can recall the definition of the cross product. And remember that the, the magnitude of the cross product, if you have the magnitude of a cross b, that ends up being the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b multiplying the sine of the angle between those two vectors. But, right, but if a equals b, like in our case above, the angle between them is zero degrees. In essence, the two vectors are right on top of each other like that. And so if the angle is zero degrees, the sine becomes zero in that case. So what we've just shown is that, let me just change color here. What we've shown is that this first term goes to zero because we have v cross a vector that's proportional to itself. So that's that's good, I suppose, if we, would, if we want to prove this. So the next part we're going to show is this one. We're going to show that this is going to be zero. So we're, we're going to have r cross dp dt. Now, let's remember what dp dt is. So dp d, oh, that's hard to say, dp dt is also just the force, right? One way to think about this is that if you have a, have a mass that's unchanging, let's say you have d dt of momentum, you can think of this as d dt of uh, mv. Now, if we assume the mass is constant, then we can pull that out and we'll have m dv dt, which is equal to ma. Okay, now this only works for a mass that is constant, but in this problem, we're going to assume just that. So we can show that the dp dt is just equal to f. So we have r cross f. Now remember, f happens to be a function of just the magnitude r. So f is proportional, proportional to r due to the fact that it is a central force. And given that, we know that, again, from the definition of the cross product up here, we know that since those two vectors are proportional to each other, then the angle between them is going to be zero. And so the cross product is going to be, uh, well, zero, because the angle is zero. 
So in that case, we'll get that r cross f of r is equal to zero. And hence, what we've shown is that, so therefore, dl dt is equal to zero. So angular momentum is a constant. It is conserved when the object is acted upon by a central force. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something today. And please come back and watch my future videos. So thanks for watching.